Welcome back. I am here with Dr. Lowenstein, who is the director here at Atlantic Health. Uh, scoliosis and spinal deformity uh, are your department in ter terms of where you uh, spend your time here at Atlantic Health. Doc, it's really interesting to talk about uh, the spine, especially with uh, younger kids and athletes and all different types of spinal injuries when you have a, a spondylolisthesis or a slip disc or a disc bulge, herniation. But we want to specifically talk about the nickname spondies. Sure. Can you kind of go over what, what this injury is? Because yeah. a lot of young athletes tend to get these, and I've read in the study that one out of every 10, a uh, recent study actually uh, out of China, uh, ch young athletes have this, this spondy. Yeah. And, and some don't even know it. Yeah, it, it. It's extremely common. It happens oftentimes in athletes, but it really can happen in, in any young uh, developing child, but it can happen in adults too. And basically it's usually due to repetitive hyperextension of the spine. So the spine's constantly extending. And as it does so, it causes an injury to this area of the spine. It's called the pars, which is uh, connects the top of the, the back of the spine to the bottom. When that part breaks, it causes pain. And that's the spondylolisthesis or the spondy and that's what needs to be treated. Mm -hmm. Now, most common is gymnasts, right? Uh, because they're always bending backwards, yeah. and I know offensive linemen, Absolutely. when they hyperextend, they're trying to block, yeah. and they hyperextend, or a child who might just fall wrong or get tackled the wrong way, they hyperextend, and you can, you can get a spawn, you can get a stress reaction to that pars. It, it, it happens most commonly classically in athletes that do repetitive hyperextension. So you're right, gymnasts, football players, particularly offensive linemen, that are constantly taking hits up high. Extending your back multiple times over a long period of time, that's what usually results in this. Um, and it can happen really across the board in any type of athlete, but those are the classic ones. Yeah, and, and what would you say to parents out there, coaches, you know, how, how do you prevent this? How do you become more aware of it? Because a lot of kids might be walking around with, with some type of reaction in that area. Maybe not pain yet, but pain is on yeah. the verge. Well, prevention's really good. Uh, a part of this is, you know, uh, some theories are because there's a mismatch with the muscular strength in your spine and the muscles that surround your spine, that if you strengthen your abdominal muscles and you try to uh, strengthen your core to create an overall relative flexion of the spine, it might decrease the risk of developing a spinal uh, lysis. Yes. So we oftentimes recommend to our athletes, you know, do core strengthening, a lot of crunches, a lot of abdominal strength exercises, because oftentimes the lumbar paraspinal muscles are oftentimes way overdeveloped in comparison to your abdominal muscles. So if you can strengthen those sometimes, hmm. it can decrease the chances of developing this long term. Yeah. Particularly in athletes that get a spondy and we treat them and it goes on to heal, we really try to get them to strengthen their, their core, their abs, to prevent it from happening again. Yeah. So important, and we've done a lot of research in the area of core strengthening and core stiffening and a lot of plank work and yeah. just isometric yeah. uh, core work, which is, which is vital. But I think it's so important for parents to realize, hey, we want to avoid that hyperextension or that you know, extension of the spine because repetitive motions can be dangerous and cause this reaction to the spine. Thanks so much, really oh, informative. And uh, we look forward to more future segments learning about proper spine health.